Lesson 1-3, uh, the topic is called Segments, Rays, and Distance. And um, in the previous section, we talked about points, lines, and planes. And we're just uh, kind of continuing with the types of objects that you have in the, uh, the uh, geometry uh, world, if you want to look at it that way. Now we're going to use uh, circle maps again to continue with the, um, the objects of geometry. And the first one that we have is called a segment. Now a segment has, has endpoints. So in other words, um, the definition of a segment is it has two endpoints. And if you take a look at a, a picture of a segment, notice here that I have an endpoint A and an endpoint uh, B, and uh, we have segment AB. Now, notice the difference with a segment. If, if I drew a line there, it would have looked like this. So I would have the arrows. I still could have the, the same points on there, but what's the difference between a segment and a line? And your answer to that should have been that a line keeps on going either direction. So here I have a line that's, that's never ending and it has points A and B on it. Now here I have a segment where each end does end. I have endpoints and this segment has the points A and B on it. Now an example of a segment might be a pencil because uh, you have endpoints to that pencil. Now the notation for this is you use the uh, two of the points that are on the segment, they're capitalized, and but notice the symbol above them. You do not have arrows at the end of them, unlike a line does. So there is, there's a huge difference between this and this. Because one of them is talking about a line and the other one is talking about a segment. Both of them have points A and B on it, but there's a difference between the object. Now, something else I want to emphasize is you don't have to, order doesn't make a difference. You could have, this line is the same thing. That's line BA. This segment is the same. So in other words, this and this mean the same thing. These are the same line. Now, ray. A ray has one endpoint. So, for example, as you're looking at uh, the picture of this, notice I have an endpoint right there. Or maybe you might call it a starting point. Really, they're, they're talking about the same thing. So, we have a starting point or an endpoint at A, and then we have, it's going to continue going, this one's going to continue going to the right through point B, and it's going to keep on going and going and going. And that's what we call a ray. Now, a ray might be a flashlight, because uh, if you turn a flashlight on, the light is going to start at the, the flashlight, and then it's going to keep on going the opposite direction. To show or talk about a ray, the symbol or the notation is AB. Now, notice the symbol above it. The symbol always points to the right. Now, order does make a difference. I cannot write this like this. I can't switch those around because the first letter has to be the end point. It has to be. So there's a big difference between this and this. This is saying that the ray is starting at B, goes through A, and it keeps on going compared to AB, which is shown by this. So realize that. Now, opposite rays are, have a common vertex between the points. So for example, if I take a look at our picture, I have a ray BC here. So look at ray BC. Starting at B, goes through C, keeps on going to the right. Now, I'm going to change the color here. Now, ray BA starts at B, goes through A, keeps on going. These are what we call two opposite rays because you have the, the common vertex, which is B, right? But they're going opposite directions. Now, one, one way you could think of opposite ray, rays are they always form a line. So in other words, they always form a line. If I look at the picture down below the diagram, if I, uh, if I took this and I raised this ray, this, these are not opposite rays. So in other words, down below, 
I have ray BC. Originally, let me turn this back. Originally, I had ray BA. Now, these are opposite rays. Ray BA and ray BC are opposite rays. But when I did this, they are no longer opposite rays because I don't have a straight line. Now, I do want to say this. Um, let's go back to the actual definition of a ray. Remember, the notation, the, the arrow always points to the right. Even if I had a ray that looked like this, maybe I have ray uh, D A, like that. Well, our notation would be that, no matter which way the original ray is pointing. Okay, length. Let's talk about length. Now, some of these things are kind of common sense. Um, if I take a look at the uh, diagram up here, okay, I, have a, I have a line AB. I, I even have a segment AB there. And from A to B, it has a length of 5. So, when we talk about length, there is no symbol right here. I have an AB. But there is not a symbol above it. When there is not a symbol above the letters, that they're asking you, what is the length from A to B? And our answer to that is 5. So when there are no symbols above the letters, they're asking you for the length of them. Now, the length from A to B. Now, congruent segments are simply two segments that have the same length. Congruent means equal. Now, the symbol for congruent is this. So congruent means equal. They're kind of interchangeable a little bit. So I have two congruent segments there. Now the bisector of a segment, all this means is, all right, here, I've, I've got a segment right here. It's 10 inches, uh, it's 10 inches, uh, uh, the segment from left to right. Now if I take, and I'm going to change the color here, if I take another segment and I split it right down the middle, so that I have 5 and 5, if I did that as closely as I could, then this blue segment is called the bisector of the segment. So the blue bisected or cut the red segment into two equal parts. Bisect means cut it into two equal parts. Now the midpoint of a segment is simply the very middle of the segment. So if AB, if AB has a length of 10 inches, notice no symbol above there, well, the midpoint of the segment would be at 5. So it's right in the middle. The midpoint of the segment is the middle of the segment. Now to end off here, let's talk about a definition and uh, make sure you have this in, in your notes. And uh, let's talk about what a postulate is. A, by definition, a postulate is a statement accepted without proof. Okay, kind of fancy word. I guess you could really look at a postulate as being a rule. Okay, or a, um, a, a certain way of saying something. Okay, it's a rule. It's a law. Okay, and we, we know that uh, we don't have to talk about it or explain it in detail because we know that it's always true. Just like uh, maybe... Uh, uh, a rule is that Wednesday follows Tuesday. So really, we could say that's a postulate. Uh, Wednesday follows Tuesday because we, we don't need to prove it. We know that always happens. Now, I have two, what we call two postulates here, postulate one and postulate two, and I want you to make sure that you've, you've uh, got these in your notes. Postulate one is called the ruler postulate, and it says every point on a number line has value. So in other words, if I have a number line here, and I have, um, say, 0 right there, and I have um, oh, 5 over here. Now, if I put another point there, that point is going to have some value. Maybe it's 1, maybe it's 2 and a half, maybe it's uh, 3 and 1 fourth, but it's going to have a certain value. And this is all the ruler postulate is, is saying. This is something that we're not going to use too much. Now, postulate 2 is called the segment addition postulate. And it says if B is between A and C, then AB plus BC equals AC. So let's talk about what this is saying. So 
It says um, if B is between A and C, so I'll say I have a point A and a point C, and B is someplace in between them. All right, what this is saying then is that the length from A to B plus the length of B to C, well, those add up to AC. So the segment addition postulate simply is saying that one length plus the other length gives you the, the total length. Um, let's talk about that a little bit more. So if you had, um, how could I use the, the segment addition postulate on this particular segment? So I'll say we have D, E, and F. What's the segment addition postulate say? Well, it says that the length from D to E plus the length from E to F, this length plus this length adds up to what? What do those add up to? The whole length, the DF. And that's all the segment addition postulate is saying. Now, why do we have these postulates? Uh, they're kind of, we're, we're starting to uh, move in that direction of proofs, of, of proving things, to getting from uh, point A to point B, or getting from one uh, um, situation to another situation, and, and we use postulates to do this. And there's other things that we use also. So, our topic was segments, rays, and distance.